Hi. Hello. Come on in. Come on. Come on in. It's that time again. It is Timu time. No bags. What could it be? <laughs> it's car accessories. It's time to review the 40 items that I have bought from Timu to use in my car or for my car. So everything is auto related. You're going to see a lot of different stuff, a big variety. As always, I'm going to give you an honest review. It is what it is, right? Today, it is all natural with the hair. It's a cooler day out. I decided to just leave it down. It's not looking too bad today, right? <laughs> anyway, welcome back to those of you who know where you are. To those of you that are new, hello. My name is Connie, and this is Connie's Little Corner. So we're going to get right into these items. This is probably going to take about an hour to go through all these. You're going to see pictures. I will put pictures up from the website and I will put pictures up um, for those things that apply to being in place inside my vehicle. And I'll specify what you're seeing so that you won't have to guess. Before I forget, though, for those of you that are new, Please go down below. You can click on my link. That will let you download the Timu app. It will get you 30% off your first order, and it will get you a $100 coupon bundle for future purchases. To get your 30% off, use my code right here, AFC95851, or you can scan this code. Scan that QR code if you're watching it on TV. It'll do the same thing. You download the app. It automatically knows my code, and you get your discount. And my hand is itching. Right, receive, left will leave. This is my right hand. So hopefully I'm going to get some dollars. <laughs> Don't know from where. All right. Got my clipboard with my list. Here we go. The battery jumper. Now, this thing, I did test it on um, an older battery that I had that was kind of like weak. And I just wanted to see if it would register with the voltage and it did. Now, I have not had to use this on my car yet, but this thing is small and compact. It is very well made, very well constructed. The clips are strong, right? They're very, very tight. I did Put them onto my battery, but I did not jump it because you never jump a battery that is not dead. <laughs> that would like explode the battery. That's not a good thing to do. So at this point, from my limited experience with this item, I'm going to give it a thumbs up, right? Quality of the item, the construction of the item, the ease of use of the item, the features that it has, it has the light on it. It lets you know um, that it's functioning, so to speak. I like that it's very compact and it stores very easily in one of my fishnets, my storage nets that I have in the back of my car. So it doesn't take up any space. The price was also very reasonable on it. And you will find the prices and the links for these items below. All right, so I'm giving this a tentative thumbs up. Have not had to use it, use it yet. And I will let you know if I ever do how it functions. Got no reason to believe that it won't work well. All right, this little air pump. I did use this and it works beautifully. Just as if you were pulling into a gas station and hooking up the end to the valve on your tire, it fits on the valve nicely. It reads the pressure on this little gauge and it pumps up automatically. It just plugs into your cigarette lighter type port in the car. So it's great. You don't, as long as you have power to your car, you could put air in your tires. This hose is long enough. It's a little more than six feet. So what I did was I did two, one side of the car first and then passed it through the driver's side to the other side of the car, did the other two tires. So it's long enough to do all four tires. And no, you don't drag it around the car. You have to do one side and then pass it over and go to the other side. That's just how it is, but that's fine. Um, it worked well. The tire gauge works well. 
no complaints. And it's relatively quiet. It just has this little hum to it. Um, even though it's plastic in nature, it doesn't matter. It functions. Thumbs up. Touch up paint. My car is fire engine red. I think they call it lava red in the Chevy book or the GMC book of colors. It's called lava red. Now, I'm going to show you the product. You'll see the little picture. And I'm going to show you a spot on my car that I started working on. The before picture you'll see over here, this had some serious deep scratches all the way to the middle on this. And what had happened is I had thought the back of my car was completely latched and it wasn't and it popped up. When it popped open out of control, it just went woo, it hit the garage door. The, the house where I lived previously, where I rented, had a very low ceiling in the garage and it hit that track that opens the garage door and it created those two scratches. That's from the groove, the chain runs in between. So it's been like that for about two years. I got this paint and in this other picture, you're gonna see the difference already in just the first coat. And you have to do a coat and then let it dry. So this is just the difference before and after, all right, with just one coat. I have since done two more coats. I let it thoroughly dry in between and you can, I know the scratch is there, so I think I'll probably or always see it, but it's not really visible. Here's a picture of the end result after three coats. Thumbs up. Car mud. Car mud is great for things that even, uh, a little brush or whatever can't get into. Carmud is great for in those little corners. You can't always get brushes and vacuums don't always clean deep in the corners. Shy of using a Q-tip or a toothpick to get down in there, Carmud works great. This is my second pack of Carmud. That's why this one looks new. I got an itchy nose. <laughs> Sorry, I was outside working all day again yesterday. Um, the car mud gets down into those corners. It gets in the areas of the corners down in your door compartments that you can't clean, down in the that little well that is in front of your gear shift, right? In those little types of corners. It works really, really good. You can use it lots and lots of times as it picks up the stuff. You can just brush the stuff off that it picks up, or you can just mix it like Play-Doh. And yeah, you don't worry about it. You, it takes a long time before it gets to the point that it's not useful anymore. So car mud is a big thumbs up. Before I forget, don't you forget to give a thumbs up to the video that you're sitting there watching, right? Okay. Um, air fresheners. Two of these I've gotten. The first one I got was in two-tone, like pinkish and purple. And the current one that I have is in, uh, and not really black, it's like a dark gray and a silver. They come with the little tiny lemon scented discs that fit in the back of these. And when my car has been closed up for a while, you can pick up the lemon scent. It's very, very faint, but you can detect a hint of a scent. If you're someone who likes a stronger scent, these pellets won't work. But what you can do is take out the little pellet and soak it in your essence, whatever it is that you scent, whatever oils that you like, whether it's lavender or whatever the case may be. I have coconut oil and I set it into the coconut oil and I let it sit in there for about 10 minutes and then just pat it dry, put it in and wow. Coconut like crazy in my car. When the car is closed up, it holds the smell. And even when the car is open, if I have the sunroof open and I'm driving down the road, you still get that coconut scent. So thumbs up for two reasons. It works great, fits in the vent perfectly. It's a nice size. And because those little pads are resentable, I guess, because you can personalize them with your own scent. So that's a good thing. And you can get replacement little discs. You can, Timu has them in all different scents. If you want to get the ones that are presented, they have those. 
hand towels. Now, these, I think I showed you these when I was showing you my Timu kitchen because they're in what Timu calls a cheese keeper. But these little hand towels, these are dehydrated towels. And when you drop literally just a couple of drops of water, if I have um, up my beverage or whatever in the car and I if get sticky fingers from a snack or something, all I have to do is open this up, literally put just a couple of drops, like maybe two, three drops of water and boom, that's it. This is like a six inch hand towel and it's sturdy. It's like one of those uh, wipes that you get that's pre-moistened. It's that kind of material. Works very well. Totally disposable. Absolutely love these little towels. It came in a pack of 50. And of course, the cheese keeper comes by itself. But great idea. It's not cheese, but it holds all 50 of these. And I keep this handy in my glove box. No sense of keeping it in the back of the car because if I need it, I don't want to have to get out of the car and go around to the back to the net, right? Okay. <laughs> Cord keepers. These tiny little dots I got specifically to use on the cord, and you'll see the picture from my car that goes from my GPS, because my car doesn't have a built-in one, goes from my GPS down the dash to where it's connected uh, for power. It holds them nicely in place. There's only one that didn't stick, and that's one on the very top, and that's my bad because I pulled on the wire and I pulled that particular clip off. Um, I should have put the clips on from the reverse up, but I didn't. I put them from the top down. It's all right. It comes with extra clips. I think there was 10 or 12 clips in the uh, little clips in the bag. It's perfect because you have to actually push the wire into the clips because they're they're kind of closed. So it holds them closed. But once you stick them on, they're stuck. I'm just going to replace that one particular one that I pulled off by mistake. They work great. They've been, oh God, let's see, a um, couple of months now in my car. They haven't been out in the Arizona heat, but they've gone through the cold season and they're staying on. So we'll see what happens when summer comes. But so far, thumbs up. Vent decor, vent decor, whatever you want to call it, decorative strips. Now I'll show you the picture from the website. These strips are about six, maybe seven inches long, and they come in a variety of colors. And of course, because my vehicle is red, my interior is black. Everything I have for my car is red and black. Um, and of course, red being my favorite color. Why wouldn't I, right? All right. So these were really easy to do. All I did was hold the strip up to the grid where I wanted to put it and cut it with a pair of scissors. And once I cut the first piece uh, for like the round vents, I'll show you here. Once I cut that first piece, all I did was cut enough to do both sides. And I had to go through a couple of, um, of the strips, but trust me, you have plenty of strips. Now, to put them on because they're so tight, you do have to pre-open them. I had to run my finger down and kind of open that seam a little bit because if you don't, the rubber folds under and then you can't get them on and it's really frustrating. But when I figured it out after the first two, the rest of them went easy. So just pre-open them, slide them on, put them on on one end and then just push them flat. They fit, they stay on nicely. They're snug enough that they don't come off even with the air is blowing at high speeds. So I put them on the two round vents that I have, and I put them on my center vents. Now I have upper vents as well for like defrosting my windows, but those vents have a curve to them. So check your car. If the vent grids that you wanna put those on have a curve, it won't work because they won't hug the curve. They don't bend. They're meant to say, stay straight. All right, so I didn't put them on the top, which is fine because you don't really see the top ones. I noticed them at the very end. I'm like, oh, I forgot these. And when I tried a couple of them to put them on, they just popped up on one end. They don't bend. So they'll bend this way, but they don't bend in an arch, right? They're just too stiff. They're not made to do that. So I'm still going to give these a big thumbs up 
nice quality. I think they look great. Even mom noticed them. She was like, whoa, right? So, and mom is very expressive when she sees something she likes. And of course, she's she's like a toddler. She's got to touch everything. And she touched one and she pulled it off. She went, oh, it. I showed her, I put it right back on. I'm like, kind of patted her hand. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> She's like, yes, mother. But anyway, thumbs up for these. I think they look nice. I almost got just the black ones that, because they're a little sparkly. And I still may get a set of black. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to actually like the red ones. I've had them up for a while and they're very, they stand out. They really do stand out. So be prepared for that. I may get the black ones just to add that little glitter to, because all the dash and everything is black, but to have that little glow might be nicer than the brassy red in your face. I don't know. But either way, I like the product. All right, the cup pads. Now, I got these puppy paw prints, of course. And I know you guys have seen them. These come in all different colors. They come with bling, without bling. Well, I didn't get the bling because I use my cup holders, all right? And you're gonna be covering up the bling. You're never gonna see it. Unless, of course, you wanna put the bling ones in your back seat where you don't always have a lot. But to me, the bling is just a waste. Yes, it looks nice, but nobody's ever gonna see it. If somebody's sitting in there and you don't have drinks, okay, they'll see it. So it's a personal choice. And for me, it's just not my choice. But they do have so many different ones. But I got these puppy ones. They're nice and thick. They wipe down good. But I will give you a heads up. They fade. All right. And simply from taking them out and wiping them down every once in a while, they've faded. Not drastically, but yes, they faded. But I'm still going to give them a thumbs up. Okay. Um, the steering wheel cover, let me find it on my list here. I got it in the puppy paw print to match and I'll show you this one. And you can see, I'll put up the picture from the website and the picture of mine now. One summer in Arizona. All right. And remember, I park in a garage, so it's not out in the sun a lot. One summer and a couple of washes and you can see how much it's faded. Doesn't matter. I still like it. It still keeps my steering wheel cool because when I do go out in the summer, obviously I'm not parking under shelter. I'm parking out in the bright sun and I don't want a hot steering wheel. So does it work? Yes. Will it fade? Yep. It'll fade. Anything with bright colors, if you're exposing it to high suns. Now, if you don't live in the sunny Southwest, then I don't anticipate it would fade that quickly for you. Um, it did not fade from the washing, so I do want to let you know. When I washed it in the first few times when I had gotten it before the heat of the summer, it did not fade. It was the sun that faded it, just so you know. But I'm still giving it a thumbs up. It works. I like it. Probably get another one. My little hanging elephant. Now, he's just decorative, but in certain cultures, elephants are considered good luck. Right. And I said, well, you know what? I drive an eight-year-old vehicle. It does have low mileage on it, and I do try to keep it well-maintained. But people down here drive crazy. And I can say that because I'm from New York, all right? And people, in, uh, people think that New Yorkers drive like lunatics. Come to Arizona, all right? New Yorkers are tame compared to Arizona drivers. But then again, most Arizona drivers are transplants from the Midwest or the Northeast or the North. Yeah. Whatever. From the middle of the middle of the country to the Eastern side of the country. Most of those are transplants. So I'm probably not the only New York driver down here, but wow. Okay. So I got the elephant for luck. He is hard acrylic. I thought it was carved wood. I was a little disappointed to find out that it was not, but it's still very cool. I really like it. And what you're seeing is it actually hanging in my Sure. So, thumbs up. So far, I've had good luck. This little frog thing. Get in, sit down, shut up, buckle up. Cracked mom up. Now, 
She's always loved frogs. She has this whole big collection of knicky necks that are frogs. So, of course, when I see something that's frogs, I automatically think of mom. I got that, and she read that, and she looked at it, and she looked at me. She goes, yes, mother. <laughs> she put her seatbelt on. <laughs> it's just it's just cute. I can't help it. I know it doesn't match the interior of the car, but I don't care. It gave her a chuckle, which gave me a chuckle, which starts our journey off on a happy note. Um, so yeah, it's just cute. It's on a chain, easy to put up. It is acrylic and it is coated, uh, sealed. It's clear on one side, but you can see the pattern on the back of it. Uh, it's been hanging there for a while. It hasn't gone through an Arizona sun yet, but we'll see what happens when it gets really hot inside the car from sitting. I'll let you know, but for now, thumbs up. <laughs> Two pairs of sunglasses that I got from Timu. This pair of really purple, purple sunglasses. And this other pair of sunglasses. The two of these, I guess the, the one pair is kind of like pinkish and purple. These I got for mom. The ones I wear are tortoise shell. But I got these uh, two pairs for mom to use when she's in the car. When I pick her up in the morning, the sun is in our eyes as we're coming in from her house to my house. And at night when I'm taking her back and the sun is starting to go down, it's right at that level where it's in your eyes going from my house back to her place. So she knows. She just grabs the pair of the sunglasses uh, from where I have them hanging on one of my, um, off, off my rearview mirror. And she'll just put them on and she just, she just looks so cute. But I keep them there in the car. They're very, very dark. I have worn these dark purple ones myself. Uh, they do fit. They're oversized. They fit right over my glasses. And they are really dark. So they have, I think they were like a couple of bucks, maybe a dollar or two. So if you're just looking for some disposable sunglasses, both of these, get a big thumbs up. My cargo nets. Now, I have two of these. I have a large one and I have a medium sized one and I'm going to show you these from the website and then I'm going to show you the pictures of them actually in my car. They go up with Velcro. They are Velcro to the back side of my rear seat. I have a cargo net on the larger one on one side holds my uh, battery jumper, my air pump, my dog leashes and I can't think of what else is in there. And then the smaller one on the other side is holding my touch-up paint, my car mud. Um, I can't even think of everything that's in there. The leftover little red colorative grids, air freshener uh, supplies, basically all the little stuff that you keep in the car. And of course, the wand um, that I use or tried to use for like cleaning the glass, but I use for actually now cleaning the roof. So the little one holds the little stuff and the bigger one holds the bigger stuff and they're staying on beautiful. They absolutely expand nicely. They support nicely. They keep everything tucked up and out of the way. If I had room, I think I would get two more and I would stack them so that I would have four, you know, two on each side because my back seat splits to fold down that I would put four back there, but I'm trying to minimize the things that I keep in my car. So by only having these two cargo nets, no complaints. They are wonderful. No matter how much I stuffed into them, they don't come off. And when I went to get groceries last week, I went to pick up a grocery order. The young lady that was putting the groceries in the back noticed them. She goes, oh, where'd you get these nets? I need these. So I gave her my link. And she's now a team member and happily shopping. <laughs> her first order, she messaged me saying her first order were those cargo nets and some other things for her car. <laughs> so, yeah, big thumbs up on both sizes of these nets. Love them. These Velcro straps come in a set of two. Now, I'm using these straps, and I'm going to show you the pictures in the back of my car. I know they look cockeyed. One's black and one's kind of like that fluorescent greenish yellow. They're set cockeyed for a reason. They are holding the seat covers, the back seat covers. They're holding those 
tight um, because the way my car was set up, there was no way to fasten those seat covers, not even around the headrest. And I needed to keep them snug so that every time the dogs got in and out, the seat covers weren't coming down. So I ran these strips through the bands on the seat cover and stuck them up on the back, and there you go. Um, they do have gaps in them. I Before I got the cargo nets, I used to use these strips along the bottom, and then because they have a separation in the middle, so to speak, you can wrap around things, I would put things like if I would get a watermelon once shopping, I would tuck the watermelon in there. Um, I would tuck any other thing that I didn't want sliding around the back, like a gallon of milk or whatever the case. I would secure it using these straps. So you can use them for whatever you want to secure. They do separate in the middle. They're all Velcro across the back. And then they have, like I would call it a little mini pocket. You don't have to use the pocket on these strips. You can Velcro one side, wrap it around. I used it on a plant when I picked up a cactus, which I didn't want going all over the back. I Velcroed one side, I wrapped it around the pot and then tucked the Velcro back and it held that pot from moving at all. So perfect for any kind of cargo that you want to secure um, and you don't have to worry about it, whether or not you have hooks in the back of your car. Works easy, love it. Thumbs up, in case I didn't tell you. All right, the seat covers. Now, I'm gonna show you pictures from the website. I got the red and black and these I got from one of the games. This was a prize from one of the games. and. Um, I wasn't quite sure if they were going to work in my car. Two reasons. Well, primarily because my seats, you can't pass anything through. When you tip this, like the, say the driver's seat, when you tip the back forward, you can't go completely out the other side. Even though there is a, a flap of fabric, it's sealed um, and you can't get past that seal to come down and connect it or tie, tuck the seat back and tie it to anything. So I had to get a little innovative with it, um, but I'm happy how they came out. They do stay on. I have larger headrests and the headrest piece is a separate piece, but they do fit nicely. The set comes with five headrest pieces in case you have a center head recent head piece in your back seat. I only needed four, so I have one for the spare. Um, the front ones, you'll, I'll show you the before and after pictures of the front, front seats, which are split, and then with the seat covers on, and then the back bench. And my seats are black denim. And of course, over the years, being an eight-year-old vehicle, they have faded. The black is not sharp like it used to be. So they have faded, and then you put these bright covers on, the, the back and the seat are two separate pieces for the, the back, the bench. The bottom went on okay. Nothing really to attach it to except for on the sides. That I was able to tuck through. And the top piece I was able to, uh, as I said, lo lo loop that over and use my Velcro tie down, so to speak, to hold that in place. The only fault that I can find with these seat covers is that it stops me from putting down the center armrest in the back of the seat. I have a center armrest that folds down, has two cup holders and a little like well for you to put things in. With the bench cover on, I can't do that. But I almost never have anybody in my back seat anymore. Uh, nobody but the dogs. So I figured, well, you know what? If I do have somebody in the back seat, it's easy enough for me to just let that Velcro go, roll that back seat cover down, and put the armrest down. It'll work. So am I happy with these? Yes, I am. I think they look great. Mom noticed them right off the bat. Um, <coughs> excuse me. They don't seem to hold the dog hair or anything else along those lines. So I'm happy with them. I'm going to give them a thumbs up. Hold on a second. Oh. Okay, I'm back. As you saw, I had to get a drink. 
Um, let's keep going. We're about halfway through. Uh, decals. Now, I have five of these decals, and I'll put them all up for you. I have uh, my decals for Sadie and Levi, and those are the colorful ones. And I think you've seen enough of my dogs that you can see which is for which. And then on the other side of my back window, and these the two of the dogs are in the back window. Um, the other three are also on the rear window, and I have the rescue decal, which I got recently, I think only about a month or so ago, maybe a month and a half ago. And then I have the hearts with the paw in it, and then I have the pit bull mom. Now, these three have been in the weather. I've had them, well, the, the, the pit bull mom and the heart one, I've had those for at least a year. So they've been in sun, rain, cold, wind, uh, having the car washed, you name it. They held up. They have not faded. The two colorful ones of the dogs, they're only been on the car recently since wintertime. They have not been exposed to the sun or the weather. So I don't know how they're going to hold up, but I have no reason to believe that they won't hold up just as nicely as the other ones did. Hold on here. I got to adjust a little bit. Okay. That's better. <laughs> Hi. All right. So it's a big thumbs up for all five of those decals. Um, now, this trash bin... This trash bin was an adventure. And I say that because the clip on the back is very narrow. It cannot go over anything that's wide. So when I got it, it was my intent to put it in the well or hook, connect it to the bottom well um, on my passenger door or on my driver's side door. So when I put it on the bottom well and I clipped it over the link, mom kept, kept kicking it with her feet and knocking it off or knocking it apart. So I said, all right, that won't work. So I moved it over to my side and come to find out, even though I'm a one-footed driver, my left foot, every time I went to get in or out of the car, kept hitting it. So I said, all right, that won't work. So then I tried moving it to the cargo nets that are directly on the back of uh, the front seats. So that, in other words, if passengers need something in the back, they have it. It's hanging on the cargo net. Well, that worked for a little while, but then the dogs started knocking it off. As they would jump in and out of the car, it would get knocked or the top would knock off of it or whatever. And I said, all right, this thing's going to get broke. So when I was cleaning the windows of the car, I was moving this thing around and I was using it to put my paper towels in. So... I put it on my door. I have a bottom well, a long well that runs the length of the door. And then I have a well at the middle level of the door. And then, of course, I have the upper part where the opening handle is and the grip is. So I just hooked it onto the middle well while I was cleaning the windows. And then I went to close the door. I went, and I realized, oh, no, I'm going to smash it. Not at all. It was in the perfect spot. Absolutely perfect spot. It didn't move. It didn't slide. It was up high enough. It didn't catch the seat at all. When mom got into the car the day after I did this, mom got into the car. She didn't knock it. When she closed the door, she didn't knock it. She put her seatbelt on. It wasn't in the way. She noticed it. She's like, where do I put my tissues? And then she saw the little thing that said trash. She goes, this is cute. And then, of course, she started taking it apart to check it out, which I made her put it back together. <laughs> but it's in the perfect spot. So the other thing is, and I don't remember your name and I do apologize, but one of my viewers had suggested that I use the little doggy scoop bag. So when you're walking your dog and you have to pick up. So I got some of those little, and they're only about that big in the roll. One of those bags fits in there perfectly so it makes a nice liner love it thank you for the suggestion which i'm now passing on to everybody with this little trash can you just need to know where you can put it before you buy it check out your car it's got to be a very thin lip for it to go over it won't you fit on most people's center consoles because the lip is too big um, it will fit on the fishnets in the back. It will fit 
it does fit on both of the wells of the door, but the bottom one is not a great location, shall we say? Um, so yeah, check out your car, but definitely worth happen having big thumbs up for this little trash bin. Now these hangers on the back of the headsets, these I like. Um, they go around the bar nicely. You just have to make sure you have them pushed all the way to the bottom of the bar so that they actually touch the seat. All right, the top of the seat. In other words, the shoulder part of the seat. They have to come down and touch. But they are very sturdy. They have the two prongs on them. I keep a bag in the back that kind of looks like a pocketbook, but it holds stuff that I need for mom in case she and I are out for the day or whatever the case may be. Like it helps change clothes and things for her. Um, and I also keep like a little mini first aid kit in there in case, you know, something happens when we're out. I have to have, I have that handy. So it holds that really nicely. On the other side, I have the one behind the driver's seat and that holds another little hanging trash bag, a uh, canvas type nylon type trash bag that I have. That's my Betty Boop bag that hangs back there. And because of the way that that's secured, the dogs don't bother it when they go in and out. It's up high enough that it's out of the way. Um, so these little hangers work great. Very inexpensive, very sturdy. They have a whole bunch of different designs, but these are the basics and they work great. They've been in my car now for over a year and none of the temperature changes or anything along those lines have affected the plastic that they're made out of. So thumbs up, like them, like them. All right, what's next? Oh, my little pivot holder. All right, so on my dash, you'll see this. This holds my GPS. Now, this is on the original two-sided tape that it came with, and it's still on, and it's been on again for the better part of a year. I don't have a built-in GPS in my car. I think it, that was not an option. Um, if I wanted to pay for OnStar, yes, I could have the GPS system, but I'm not paying for OnStar. So I got this Garmin GPS, and I got it with the lifetime updates, so it was definitely worth it. My Garmin sits in this perfectly and this pivots so for example if um maybe the sun is coming in the window a certain way and it's glaring on the screen of the garmin i can just pivot it a little bit to get that rid of that glare or if mom wants to see where we're going i can pivot it a little bit so she can actually see the map and she can see the little car with like the headlight going down the road uh, which she thinks is the coolest thing so that's all right but what I do like is that if I move quickly or if I take a sharper turn, it doesn't keep pivoting. It stays in place. It takes pressure, hand pressure, to actually click it into the next pivot point that you want. So it stays in the position you have it in. It's easy for me to take uh, to unplug my Garmin from the back, take it in and out, and put it out of sight. I will give you a heads up these little orange prongs that hold it. If they sit in the sun and if your device, and this will hold a cell phone as well, not just like if you do directions, you know, on, on your cell phone, if you do like Google maps on your phone, it'll hold your phone. It'll hold your garment. It'll hold either, but you have to make sure that it does not have any type of tilt towards you. All right. It can't tilt forward because in the sun, those little prongs in the front that hold it steady, they get soft. And if you hit the brakes, they're not hard enough anymore. They lose their rigidity. Your device will come flying out at you. So I have mine set on my dashboard where it has just a little tilt away from me so that it's leaning more up against the two back taller supports that are back there. It works beautifully. I've had no problems since I did that. I found out about the tint, the tint, the tilt in the heat, uh, the hard way. So I had to move it from where I had it before, relocate it into a place where it was either level or slightly, just ever so slightly tilted away from me. But this little device, love it. I've tried other things for my Garmin. They failed. This 100% has worked. I've had, I think this is one of the first purchases I ever made from Timo, so it's more than a year old. Love, love, love this. Thumbs up. 
By the way, have you given a thumbs up to this video yet? Hmm? And if you haven't subscribed, go down, click, so you don't miss my videos or my notifications. Love you, right? I know. Okay, sunglass holders. Now, I think I talked to you in a previous video a long, long time ago, many moons ago, about how the original clip, sunglass clip that I'd gotten, had literally melted. It had gotten so soft that it actually deformed and would not hold itself up on the visor, let alone sunglasses. So I tossed that and I got another pair that had a metal clip on them, but the hinge was cracked. So I had to toss that. Then I got these and this came in a set of two. Now I could put one over mom's visor, but there's no point in doing that. I just keep it as a spare. Uh, which is back in one of my cargo nets. It's sitting back there. So this one so far, knock on wood, has worked great. It's been up for many months. It holding the sunglasses. Now it has not been exposed to the hot, 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 you know, 120 degree summers that we're getting down here lately. So we'll see what happens when it does get in the heat, but it's gone through the cooler weather and the colder temperatures um, and a lot of handling as I take my sunglasses in and out of it, and it's holding up great. So, so far, thumbs up. I'll let you know after the heat of the summer is gone. <laughs> uh, where are we? Oh, the tissue holder. Okay. This is a thumbs down on this tissue holder. Now, hold on. I need more drink. Okay. So, on this tissue, oh. Oh, look at my nice little bruise. I had a fight with a lemon tree yesterday and I'm still in one piece. It's in a million pieces, but boy, it went out fighting. <laughs> it went down hard. Okay, hold on. All right. Um, so anyway, on this tissue holder, this is a thumbs down and I'm giving it a thumbs down primarily because it no longer works as it was initially designed to do. Okay. Um, what I mean by that is when I bought this, very easy to install. You just wrap it around the visor, close the Velcro on the back, slide your box in the front so that the bar goes around the opening and then you pull your tissues through. Worked perfectly, worked beautiful. But as time went on and as I was changing the boxes, um, in and out, you know, replacing the boxes, the elasticity started disappearing and I had to start making the Velcro tighter and tighter and tighter. And now it's to the point that even with the smallest tissue box, which I think they're only about an inch and a half, the Velcro, the, the elastic is so stretched out that the Velcro passes each other and there's nothing to attach it to. So right now what I had to do was literally tie it on to the back of the, to the visor. I tied it on the back. Um, it's totally stretched out. Now, I cannot say that this was from the heat because I did not get this in the heat of the summer. I got this in the fall. I got this in like late August. So it hasn't gone through those 118, 120 degree temperatures. So I know that would damage the elastic. Um, but because it didn't go through that, all I can think of is this is a quality issue and the elastic was not the best quality. It no longer functions as it was originally designed to do. And it started to fail after only changing like the second box. The elastic started to give out to where I noticed I had to make it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter each time. So I have to give this device a thumbs down. Now you're willing to try it. That's up to you, but it's Buyer, beware. Okay? Okay. Uh, next. Oh, my little grocery bag carrier. We're almost done. We only got about six or seven more items to go. My grocery bag carrier, my pen is dying. Um, this thing now, first off, I want to correct a misunderstanding that most people have about this device. If you look on it, you'll see it has like a little button knob. It has a little latch. It's not a latch. It is not meant to close and lock in place. 
That's not the design. That's not what it's meant for. And if you do like I did and you look closely at the device, there's nothing for it to catch on to a latch. So it's not a latch. What it is, it's what I call a slide bar. Once you put your bags on this hoop and you let go of the thumb button, that little bar closes. And the purpose is simply to keep the bags from sliding out the opening. That's all it's meant for. There's no place for it to latch. There's nothing for that bar to connect to. So I've seen reviews where people have said, well, it, it the latch was broken. It didn't hook. It kept flopping open. It's not a latch. <laughs> Okay, so that being said, this item works perfectly exactly as designed. I have carried well over 40 pounds on it, and I have a strong arm and I have a strong hand grip. So I had put a couple of bags that had like two gallons of milk in it and root beer and all sorts of heavier like frozen foods. I had like six or seven bags hanging off this thing. And it was strong. It held them. So whatever your hand can hold in one hand, which for me, that's about 70, 80 pounds. Um, whatever your hand can hold, so far I'm finding that this thing can hold it as well. And again, don't expect it to latch. Don't expect it to lock because that is not um, what it's designed for. It does exactly what it's designed for. I love it and I highly recommend it. Okay. Oh, I did that one. Oh, the pink carrier strip. Now, you saw me get this a couple of hauls ago. It was was a um I think it came in a sponsored haul. This little tiny strap is perfect for anything you have to carry and you don't have enough hands for. So you can hook a bunch of shopping bags on it, whether it's grocery bags or whether you're going to like a clothing store and you have the bags, you know, the, the nice paper bags with the handles and whatnot. You can hook that on it. If you're going out somewhere with a family and maybe all the kids and everybody has drink bottles and they don't want to carry their own drink bottles, you can just put a whole series of drink bottles on there because most drink bottles nowadays have straps. You can carry them all in one hand, you know, with a strap. Um, you can hook this strap onto your shopping cart, onto your roller, onto a walker, onto the, the strap of your pocketbook. I've hooked it onto the strap of my pocketbook and gone into the clothing store and not using a cart because I was only going in for a few things. And as I was picking things up, I was literally hooking the hanger onto that strap and things were being carried off that strap that was hooked onto my pocketbook, which was on my shoulder. There wasn't anything long, so there was nothing touching the ground. And it was perfect. And then when I got to the register, all I had to do was unclip the snap, pick the whole thing up, and put it on the counter. It worked wonderfully. So anything that you can think of that you need to carry that you don't have an extra set of hands for, that's your extra hand. Right? It's perfect. Love it. Thumbs up. You've given a thumbs up to this video, right? I did say that before. Did I say it again? <laughs> well, I got to remind you guys, right? I get a thousand views, but I don't get a thousand thumbs up. Come on. And I'm doing my own hair for you today. Come on. <laughs> All right. I know I'm being silly. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. These little small nets. Now, I'm giving these small nets. <clears throat> In one way, a thumbs up and another way, a thumbs down. All right. So here's the thumbs down. Let me give you the bad news first. Because of the way these are designed, these are very stiff on the three sides. And the three sides is where the two-sided tape is. These will only work if you have a flat surface. And I mean perfectly flat. It cannot have any kind of curve to it. I tried to put these on the door uh, the passenger door and the driver's side door in my car to hold things. And they popped off because there's just ever so slight a curve. And I couldn't find a spot that was convenient lower down the door where I could actually put it. I didn't want it where my arm was going to be constantly hitting it. So I could not make use of them where I wanted to. So that's the downside. Flat surface or it's no good. Now, 
On the upside, I did put one of them, and I'll show you the picture. I did put one of them, <clears throat> excuse me, on the top of my glove box. And the glove box is perfectly flat in that area, so it stays. And when I go shopping, when I come out, I put my receipts in there. Or if I go to a drive-up, I pop my receipt in there. And then when I get home, I just grab my receipts, go in the house, and record everything. So there are spots that you can find. But my favorite thing is I have two of them in the house on the refrigerator. Guess what's in them? Coupons. Food coupons go in one next to my grocery list, and the other one gets miscellaneous coupons like hmm, for like home services or discounts or uh, going out to the bakery and getting, you know, like Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Anything that's not from the grocery store goes in the other one. So that gets the coupons. And before I had gotten the recipe book binder from Timu, I had anytime I come across a new recipe and I write it down, I put it in one of those nets on the refrigerator. So there are so many things that this can be used for, not just in the car. Now, I'm not a big couponer, so there's never a lot in there, but it draws it to my attention so that if I'm going shopping, I see those coupons right there in my face. I can just pull them out and look to see, do I need to get what's on them? So in the car, on a flat surface, absolutely. In the house, on any flat surface, on the side of your cabinet, on your refrigerator, the side of your desk, any place that you need to store a little bit of stuff, a little bit of paper, set your phone, whatever the case may be. Not just for cars. Thumbs up for that. Thumbs down because it's restricted to only flat surfaces. That's not such a bad thumbs down after all, right? Okay, next. This window cleaning pad. Now, the window cleaning pad, I'm giving it a big thumbs down for cleaning windows. And that's a very specific thumbs down. For cleaning anything else in the car, uh, the vinyl of your doors, the outside metal of your car, the roof of your car, it gets a big thumbs up. These are like little chamois claws on the end of this thing. And these cloths are perfect uh, on the end of this bar. To, I can reach halfway across the top of my roof, which I have a midsize SUV. So it sits a little higher than a normal car. I can reach halfway across my roof. I can stand at the back of the car and reach up that way, all the way around. And even from the front, if I stand on the side um, like where the windshield wipers are, I can reach around to the front and get the front part of the roof with this thing. The cloths work perfectly. They're gentle. They don't scratch. And you know what? For a non-glass surface, it's not going to streak. And if it was, you wouldn't be able to see the streaks anyway. <laughs> so for anything but glass, it gets a big thumbs up. For trying to use this to clean the glass like it shows you on the website, well, yeah, that's a big thumbs down. It streaks, 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 streaks. It's like you never even tried to clean your window. Don't use it on glass. That's just my experience. I've used it with Windex. I use it with white vinegar. I use it with soap and water. Didn't matter. Whatever I used it with on glass, it left streaks. So you have to go behind it and dry everything. And what's the point? I would rather just use a paper towel for my glass and not, you know what I'm saying? Just keep it simple. <laughs> Okay, the raincoat. This little raincoat actually came in handy. Um, there was a time recently when it was raining and I went to pick up mom. And I have a very small compact umbrella. I mean, really small compact umbrella. So I knew that was going to be enough to cover mom, but not me. So before I got out of the car, I reached in the glove box. I grabbed this little thing. I threw it over the top of me. I got out and it's raining all over me. And you know what? It worked. I'm staying dry. I go in, I get mom. I hold the umbrella over her to keep her dry. So I'm out in the rain being exposed a second time. Get her in the car. I'm loading her walker in the back. I'm still out in the rain, walking around, finally getting into the car on my side and by the way, I will tell you, these seat covers, these are kind of water repellent. 
because they didn't soak up any of the water that came off the back of this thing. Um, when I got home, I just took it off in the garage. I shook it out. I hung it up over on one of the hooks I have over the dryer, let it air dry. By the time I took mom home that night, it was already dry. When I got home, rolled it up, stuffed it in the bag, back in the glove box. Comes in random colors. Yes, it's just a cheap plastic bag to go over your body, but for pennies, who cares? It worked. I got wet. Uh, really, really wet. But under this thing, I stayed dry. So the, you know what I'm saying? It got wet. I didn't get wet. <laughs> so it worked. And I'm happy. The camping spork. You've seen me use a camping spork. Um, well, you showed me demonstrate this camping spork in a different video. I think part of my team of kitchen, probably in like video number one or number two. Um, I originally had gotten it for the car. Somehow it ended up in the house and I did use it in the house, but now it's back in the car. It's in the glove box and it's perfect because if I stop at fast food and like, if I want to get a loaded baked potato for when, from Wendy's or if I want to get the baconator fries because they're a little messier and I don't want to have a mess, you know, all over my steering wheel and everything, I'll use the camping spork. And it's great because when I'm done, I just throw it in the Wendy's bag, bring it in the house, wash it up, use a little chain to hook it back onto my pocketbook so that I remember to take it out um, to the car with me the next time I go out. Works perfectly. It's also really nice. You never know where you're going to go that you're either going to get, like, say you're going to a local fair or a carnival or a flea, a flea market or a farmer's market and you want to stop and have a bite to eat. You just whip this thing out of your pocketbook and you've got your own piece of silverware. You've got your own utensil. You don't have to worry about either using your fingers or something cheap plastic. I love this thing. I'm going to get another one. That way there'll be two in the car, one for me, one for mom, because she does love the loaded baked potatoes. And every once in a while, maybe once a month or so is a treat. When I pick her up, we'll swing into Wendy's and we'll grab a loaded baked potato or we'll share bacon eater fries. So she's like me. She's a cheese lover, cheese, bacon, anything along those lines. And you know what? At her age, let her eat what she wants, right? She's lived this long. Let her enjoy her food, uh, which I try to do all the time when I have over. All right. Onward. So thumbs up for that, by the way. Um, these side mirrors... All right, now these side mirrors are, they're okay. I, I really, I have to give them a thumbs up because they do work. The challenge with these is finding the right location on your mirror. Now, because every vehicle doesn't have an identical blind spot and every vehicle doesn't have the same shaped side mirrors or because it's different elevations and drivers change their mirrors for different views, no one set position for these little rep, excuse me, for these blind spot mirrors. There's no uniform place to put them. So I started by trying to put them on the innermost, closest to the car, the innermost corners of the side view mirrors. And I found it did not improve my view at all. It did not change the side view on either side of the car, no matter how I adjusted my mirrors. So I then took them and moved them to the outermost corners, the outermost bottom corners of my mirrors. And that made a big difference. That not only showed the blind spot, but it also showed the entire side lane uh, without me having to turn my head just a little bit. Now, I'm of that generation that we're taught you turn your head before you change lanes. You don't ever depend 100% on your mirrors. You take a quick glance just to see if maybe something was missed or maybe you looked the wrong time and from the time you looked in your mirror, somebody made a, made a lane change and is coming up next to you. I always double check. Quick shot just like that to make sure and that I have clearance to go. But these make it much more comfortable and much more easy for me to be able to see what's there. And of course, I always try, as I'm going down the road, I always try to keep an eye on what's coming up behind me and what's on the side of me. What what am I passing? I'm passing a white car. Okay, how long before I'm clear of that car? I'm just very mindful of my surroundings when I'm driving. But these help. 
So I will definitely give them a thumbs up once you find the perfect placement for them based on your vehicle, how you drive and how you set your mirrors. Okay. Okay. Um, only three more things and then we're done. Oh my gosh. We're almost at an hour. All right. This green Carvac, and this is a Carvac. This is exactly what I got this for was the car. Do I keep it in the car? No, because it takes up too much space. I keep it handy though, in one of my cabinets in the garage and it works wonderfully. Now it has one drawback and that is that the container that holds the residue that you're picking up doesn't hold a lot. So you have to keep an eye on it, but it's so easy to change. It just untwists, you pull out the little filter, pour it out, knock the stuff off the filter, put it back in, twist it on. And you, I mean, literally it takes less than 30 seconds to do that. Great, powerful, nice suction. I used it for about a half an hour on the car before I noticed it started to kind of lose a little bit of its power. It is um, USB rechargeable, but it works totally, you know, it's totally portable, does not have to be plugged in in order to work, charges up very quickly. It charged up in only about a half an hour. And I did let it run all the way down. As with most rechargeables, you should let them deplete as much as possible. That way you'll get the best charge um, out of it. When you do charge it, you'll get the, uh, you know, the most complete charge. So it worked great, cleaned up nicely, charged up beautifully, um, was easy to empty. I tried all the attachment with it. The groove attachment works, the little tiny attachment to get around like Cuffs and corners work good. The main long attachment that works because so, it has three different attachments to it worked beautiful. No complaints. Absolutely love this. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Oh, and I did try it on my sofa and it worked beautiful on the sofa for picking up a lot of the loose little hairs, you know, before I let the sofa get too bad. <laughs> but it worked. So it was really good as a little handheld vac um type of thing so yeah happy thumbs up okay two more things um this pocketbook sling between the seats now hold on i gotta change position here oh, oh, oh. okay um yes my back is driving me a little bit crazy because i was swinging an ads swinging a hand axe uh big loppers hand loppers and a shovel yesterday. So besides the attack of the lemon tree that I got over here, I put my back on my shoulders through an awful lot. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I have to keep changing positions to keep my back comfortable using my massager later on that I, you saw me haul a couple of videos ago. And if you haven't seen it, go back and look for the video where it shows that massager in the thumbnail. You're going to love that thing. Okay. So again, Pocketbook sling, I got sidetracked, sorry, um, that goes between the seats. Now, at first I didn't think this was going to work for my car because I do not have a center console. I just have an arm that swings down. But after I figured it out, it actually works really, really well. So it's got straps that go up to either headrest and they go around the headrest and then you push the headrest down to hold it. And then it's got the flat bottom and the flat bottom has two Velcro pieces. Now, those Velcro pieces are supposed to come down and attach to either side of your center console, but I don't have that. So instead, I have the armrest. What I did is I ran one Velcro piece through the other, made like a little loop to hold it, and then ran the other one around my armrest and put the armrest down. It stabilized it perfectly. It makes the perfect little shelf right there to set the bag on. And the way it's designed is it doesn't fit between the seats. It's not meant for that. It's meant to fit behind the seats and the seats kind of stop it from coming forward. That helps make that nice little shelf, as you'll see in the pictures. And yes, that is the picture of it in my car. It also works great to keep the dogs from coming through the split seats and into the front. 
So they'll stick their heads over it, but they kind of look at it like, well, I can't get through there. Uh, so it does make a good barrier for the pets as well. But it works great. I can put any little thing down on there I want. It will hold. And I carry a pretty good sized pocketbook. You've seen me hold my red leather pocketbook. I carry a pretty good sized bag. That'll sit on there. If I'm coming in from, uh, you know, picking up a little something at the store, it'll hold a small bag. If I'm coming from Wendy's, it'll hold the Wendy's bag. I can sit it right there. Um, yeah, it just, it works great. I really like it. I am going to modify it with some Velcro of my own because what I want to do is I want to have a Velcro strap that keeps whatever's on the shelf. If I have to slam on the brakes, I don't want whatever's on that shelf to come between the seats and come forward and then have a problem. So I have long pieces of Velcro and they're red. I am going to make a strap that will go around it from front to back so that whatever I put there, it will hold it back. It'll make like a little seat belt for it. That's the only thing, the only drawback on this little bag holder or whatever. They call it a pocketbook sling or something like that. That's the only drawback is that it doesn't have anything to hold what's in it from coming forward. So I'll modify it and do that myself. But there you go. And last but not least is this little tiny <clears throat> mini keychain screwdriver. I keep this handy. This stays on my keys. And I keep this handy because, number one, I wear glasses. I also have the sunglasses. And if you ever looked around your car at certain things, they have little itty bitty tiny screws. Um, Mom's walker. Every once in a while needs the screws tightened up. I don't want to have to carry a whole big toolbox in my car. This little mini set, this is great because it's Phillips head on one end and it's flat head on the other. It literally gives me everything I need in a pinch. It weighs absolutely nothing. It takes up no space, but it's handy to have, right? Who doesn't need something that's handy? So guys, that's it. You've just had a review was uh, 40 items, Timu car accessories with other uses, not just for the car. So if you haven't already, you know what these are, right? No, they're not trigger fingers. That's a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Get this out into the universe. Let everybody see the great products that Timu does offer. I do have more car items coming, but I didn't want to hold off the video waiting for those to come in because I've got two orders and they're nowhere to be found. And I, I, yeah, I'm not holding my breath. They'll get here when they get here, right? So please don't forget if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, right down below, click on that button. Get your 30% off. If you're new, download the app. You know what to do, right? You've all heard it and seen it before. Stay hydrated. Levi says stay hydrated. Above all else, please stay sweet. And I will catch you again in just a couple of days.